Hi, I'm Carolina Eich and I play the theremin. Maybe you have seen me play the flight of the bumblebee on this special instrument, which you play without touching. Either here or here. Either way, I would like to show you today how I got the idea of playing this extremely difficult piece on an instrument that is mostly known for its lyrical way of playing and how you can learn to play the flight of the bumblebee on the theremin yourself. Let's get started. For me, the theremin seems to be the perfect instrument to play the flight of the bumblebee on since by moving our hands in space we can create sound and so does the bumblebee while freely buzzing around in the air. If you want to play the flight of the bumblebee yourself, you will need your theremin setup, the score, a tremolo pedal, an accompaniment and a bumblebee. But that's optional of course. Let's start by looking at the score. There are a lot of black notes here, which usually we as thereminists try to avoid, but don't you worry. We will have great help of our tremolo pedal, which will be separating the notes for us. So all we need to learn is to play the right pitches and preferably some dynamics as well. You could start to practice to play every single note. That's what I did in the beginning. But this doesn't make much sense since we will be playing this piece pretty fast in the end. So you won't be able to distinguish the notes in any case. Instead, focus on the most important notes, on the corner points or corner notes, if you would like to call them like that. In the beginning, that would be E, C and F. For these corner notes, you want to have a good feel of your hand. So I like to use my closed finger position one for the C and naturally then the E gets finger position three and the F gets four. Now you need to remember only these three positions and everything in between you can play with a glissando. It's just important that you stay in the right rhythm. You go through the whole piece, mark your corner notes and practice them with the glissando in between. then slowly with the tremolo pedal. You can use any kind of tremolo pedal. Even a tremolo or panning plugin in your software will work in case you have your theremin connected to a computer. The tremolo will interrupt your sound like this. For this piece, we want to set the depth of the interruption to max. You can now choose different tempos. For the start, let's just choose a slow tempo. And then just speed it up. Since the tremolo pedal is doing the job of separating the notes, I would say it is actually easier on the theremin than on any other instrument to add some dynamics to the piece. To make the tune a bit more lively, I like to emphasize on certain notes. For me, in our example bars, it is the E and F in the first bar and just the E in the second bar. Practice the dynamics slowly for the whole piece and first without sound. Now that we've got the right hand and the left hand settled, let's turn up the speed of the tremolo pedal and pick a sound which is appropriate for a B. This one. You can play the tune solo on your theremin now, but it will make a huge difference if you add an accompaniment to it. The accompaniment is the frame of this piece and will bring your melody in the right perspective.
And that's basically it. Before you leave and start to practice, I just want to give you one more insight of my Bumblebee video production. The first video we recorded in 2016. My pianist Christopher and I had played the piece live many times and finally decided to record it. For the second video, which I recorded in 2020, I had the idea of playing the piece with a real bumblebee, suggesting the image that the bumblebee itself would play the music. To add an additional layer to the performance, I wanted to work with sound and space. Now, for this, I pre-recorded my theremin part and worked with a surround plugin in post-production to adapt the spacing of the sound to the image. You will see that in some parts the camera is far away from me and in that case you will also hear the bumblebee far away. But sometimes the camera comes closer to the bee. And in that case, you will hear the bee also closer to your ear. So if you watch the video with headphones, you will have the binaural experience of the bumblebee flying around in space. That's all for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you want to hear the full versions of my Flight of the Bumblebee recordings, check them out in the links below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.